I just want to share a few thoughts. And as I was studying the scriptures about these personal encounters that Jesus had with so many people, and maybe week by week and every few weeks I'll share a different character and how that personal encounter with Jesus completely changed their life. And when you look at it at the very beginning, the very first person, for those of you who love the Blessed Mother and who are devoted to the Blessed Mother, the first person to have an encounter with Jesus, not only physically, but spiritually, was the Blessed Mother. And we can learn a lot from her life. Michael, could you read the scripture for us for Luke's Gospel? I won't keep you too long. Mary was the first person ever to respond to the gospel. The fathers of the church call her the first disciple. She is the model disciple for all of us. And if you're in here today and you've never, ever encountered Jesus or never surrendered or said yes to Jesus, this is your day. Amen? Amen. And for those who have that spirit of fear, we're going to pray for you as well. Because that has to go, same as it went in Gertie's life. Amen? Amen. Could you just read the scripture? Let the scripture anoint us and read it for us, Michael. Luke's, yeah, Luke's gospel. Luke one twenty six to 38. Luke 1, 26 to 38. In the sixth month, are we on? In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth. He was sent to a young virgin who was betrothed to a man named Joseph of the family of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Rejoice, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Mary was troubled at these words, wondering what this greeting could mean. But the angel said, Do not fear me, for God has looked kindly on you. You shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call him Jesus. He will be great and shall rightly be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the kingdom of David, his ancestor. He will rule over the people of Jacob forever, and his reign shall have no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be if I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy Child to be born shall be called the Son of God. Even your relative Elizabeth is expecting a son in her old age. Although she was unable to have a child, and she is now in her sixth month with God, nothing is impossible. Then Mary said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me as you have said. And the angel left. Amen. This is Mary's yes. Many people have never said yes. Many people have rejected when God has come with a message. And many people don't understand. Mary, most scholars believe she's between between twelve, fourteen years of age, she's a child. She doesn't understand. How could this be? But she still said yes. And many people come to meetings like this and they don't understand. Maybe you have to just follow Mary's example and just say yes. Just say yes to the Lord. Just say yes to Jesus. And as soon as she said yes, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit overshadowed her. And she was full of the Holy Spirit. She's just a child. 
Matthew 18, verse 3, what does it say? <clears throat> this is for those maybe watching by way of Facebook and webcam. This is for the intelligentsia, the well-to-do people who think they know better than Father Jerry, who know, they think they know better than us as we're trying to reach out to people. This is for religious people who may think they can think their way to the kingdom. Jesus says, unless you become like a child, you cannot enter the kingdom. What does it say? Matthew 18, verse 3. Then Jesus called a little child, set the child in the midst of his disciples, and said, I assure you that unless you change and become like little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless you become like a child. Do you know a lot of people's minds will stop them from saying yes? A lot of people's pride and stubbornness will stop them from being saying yes. I remember the first time I went to a charismatic meeting and people were praising God. People were so full of the, of the Lord, full of joy. You could see the love that they had for the Lord. There was something so exciting about this. I didn't understand it. But I knew something special was going on here. And I said yes. I didn't understand it fully, but I just knew. I need to say yes to this. And Jesus says in many times in the Gospels, Father, thank you that you've hidden this from the learned and the wise, and you have given it and revealed it to mere children. You have to come to Jesus like a child. And for those of you who say your rosary, who, who, who say they love the Blessed Mother, well, the Blessed Mother said yes, and she surrendered fully to God's will, even when she didn't understand it and couldn't work it out, she said yes. And I'll tell you, the biggest obstacle for people receiving salvation is this. Trying to work it out and trying to have an opinion about this and an opinion about that and I don't know about this, I don't know about that. Just say yes. Because the Holy Spirit is here. And the Holy Spirit is touching people's hearts. The Bible says no one can come to Jesus unless the Father draws him by the Spirit. And the Bible tells us later, <clears throat> when Mary went to present Jesus in the temple, Simeon came forward and he says, a sword's going to pierce your heart. We heard Gertie talking four years in hospital suffering 40 years suffering with fear maybe you're here today maybe you've suffered so much maybe you're in pain well welcome to Christianity Jesus says if you really want to follow me take up your cross and follow me and Mary is a great example. At the wedding feast of Cana, she comes and tells Jesus about this situation of no more wine. And then she turns to the stewards and she says, do whatever he tells you to do. That's Mary's gospel. That's Mary's gospel. And I was going to say, if Mary was here, I'm sure she is here. She'd be saying the same to you. Say yes. Don't try and work it out. Just say yes. You yeah, maybe your heart's broken. Maybe you've just gone through divorce. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe you've gone through some stuff and you're in so much pain. Do you know what? Welcome. The Blessed Mother went through the pain. And true discipleship, let me tell you that. We ask people to come forward here and to surrender their life to Christ. But this is not just an emotional response. This is the beginning of discipleship. Jesus says you will be hated. 
you'll be flogged. People reject you because of me. Discipleship, you pay the price. And the first person who encountered Christ was Mary, saying yes, heartbroken, heart pierced, and she follows him all the way to the cross. And if you are a true disciple, you have to follow Jesus all the way to the cross. I was in evangelical Christianity for over 30 years before I returned to the church. And I used to say to a lot of evangelicals, you throw in people, you tell them all the, all the rewards and all this and stuff, and you give them this false gospel that everything's going to be great. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, take up your cross. So we throw in people before we cross them. We have to get them to the cross first before we get them to the throne. Are you with me? And we, many of you are going through stuff. And many of you are going through pain. Maybe hopeless situation. You think, this man doesn't know my situation. No, I don't, but God does. God knows your situation. And he knows your heart. And I'll tell you, every one of you here is here because the Holy Spirit has called you here. That's true. That's so personal. How personal God we serve. That the Holy Spirit has caused you to get an invite from somebody. You maybe get a card. You maybe get a phone call. But that was the Holy Spirit calling you. I was talking to somebody the other day. They were talking about the, the most important people in the world. And Putin and Biden. And Let me tell you who the most important person is in the world. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's not an it. He's a person and he's here right now. And he's the third person of the Trinity. And he loves you so much. He's called you here to hear this message. Say yes. Like the Blessed Mother said yes. Follow him. It's not going to be easy. I tell you, we are living in desperate days. The Bible prophesies there's going to be a time, there's going to be a form of godliness, a form of religion, but it's a total opposite, denying the very power of God. That's where we are in Ireland. That's why we are doing these meetings to reach people and give them a sense of hope. But no matter what you're looking through, God can heal your life. God can save you. You just have to say, you can throw some stuff. Maybe people watching Facebook. Maybe you can throw some stuff. Maybe you can throw terrible pain. Let me tell you, this is a personal story. <clears throat> Just to show you how incredible a woman the Blessed Mother is. Many of you know my testimony. My testimony came when my wee boy died. And at his funeral, at his funeral, my mother fainted. It was just too much. Fainted. And yeah, John 19 tells us at the foot of the cross, there she is. There she is. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. How many mothers could do that and go all the way to the cross and stop? That's the Calvary Road. And I know by the Holy Spirit, there's people in here with broken hearts. Excuse my throat. There's people in here that are in a desperate situation. There's people in here who've been away from a long, a long time. And the Holy Spirit says, come back. It's time. It's time to come back. Say yes. Like the Blessed Mother said. Don't try and work it out. You don't have to try and work it out. Just start. Your German. The Bible says, and she pondered things. She pondered these things in her heart. She was still on this journey. But she still kept on the journey. And she's here saying to you, do whatever he tells you to do. Amen? Amen. Let's just bow our head and close our eyes just for a minute. Thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus.
that you are here by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would touch hearts today and touch those who need your loving embrace. We thank you that you're a God who hears and answers prayer. And just as the angel Gabriel came with that message to the Blessed Virgin, I say to everybody here, while well, our eyes are closed, <clears throat> will you say yes? Maybe for the first time of rededicating your life. He'll say yes. Show me your hand if you want to say yes to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. God bless. Does anybody here want to rededicate their life to Jesus? You've been away a long time. It's time to come back. And just as the Blessed Mother went all the way to the cross, I want you to come forward just now. Come to the altar. All those of you put up your hand. I know it's, it's not an easy thing to do. Come to the altar and meet me here. Come. Just get up off your chair. Walk down the front. Walk down the front. Yeah, come. Come and meet me here. David. We say yes. We say yes. We say yes. We say yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. See, this is, this is a journey we're all on. There's people came here before, but they're, they're so hungry for God, they want more. Isn't that a great place to be? Isn't that a great place to be? They just want more and more and more. You're hungry for the things of God. Come on, let's come. There's plenty of room in the altar. Just, we'll just move up. And we're going to pray. And we're going to pray for those here. You need Jesus. Say yes. You need something to say, Michael? Yeah, uh, just as Terry's calling everyone up, uh, I was travelling up here the day from Katie, and a question that actually came to me, and I was talking to a friend of mine over here, Paul, when I landed, arrived here, and asked, said to him, I was actually asking myself, coming up the road, and I'm like to say I've been with the Holy Spirit 10 years or whatever and I actually asked myself the question the day and I'm sure a lot of you have asked the same question no matter how long we've been there have I really give my all mm -hmm. not not just my toes or my fingers my limbs have I given my all and as Terry has just called us if anyone is asking that we question is to step forward <clears throat> if they choose because God has called everyone but the ones who are chosen are the ones that say yes so if it's in our hearts please come forward yeah amen Terry will give the blessing thank you Gertie Gertie can you come up beside me for a minute I just want you to get ready uh, can I say, just say something to you there's many people accept Jesus as Savior, but not Lord. There's a difference. If he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. It's like, it's what I like to call demon faith. A lot of people believe in Jesus. Also do the demons, the Bible says in the book of James, and they shudder. They believe in the existence of Jesus. So it's not just about believing in Jesus as Saviour. It's following him like Mary did as a true disciple all the way. Through all the pain and all the suffering and everything that comes at you. That's what it means to be a true disciple. And not only that, it's to go and tell others. And to bring them here next week and be a fisher of men. Amen? Amen. So let's just say that prayer. Bow your head and I'll ask you just to say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, come before you now, I come before you now, just as I am, just as I am 
I am sorry for my sins. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me. Lord Jesus, I forgive all others that have sinned against me. I reject Satan. I renounce him and his evil spirits. I give you my entire self this day and forever. Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart and I invite you into my life. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Savior and most of all, as my Lord. Lord Jesus, heal my heart, change me, strengthen me in body, in soul, and spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Cover me with your precious blood and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I love you, Lord Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that I shall follow you all the days of my life. Amen. One more thing. The final scripture we hear about Mary is in the Acts of the Apostles, Acts chapter 1. The Bible says at Pentecost, the 120 were in the room, and Mary was in the room with many other women. And the scripture says at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. And we're going to just say a prayer so that the Holy Spirit can come upon you <clears throat> and fill you. The Holy Spirit fell, and the Bible says, and all spoken tongues. Did you know the Blessed Virgin spoke in tongues? That's what the Bible says. Do you know at Pentecost when they were just waiting for the Holy Spirit? She was there. She was baptized in the Holy Spirit. She was released and filled again with the Holy Spirit. And when he came, when the Holy Spirit came, she knew. She's the only woman in history that carried her baby twice. She knew when the Holy Spirit came. Because the Bible says, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. So I'm just going to ask you to pray this with me. Close your eyes. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Fall afresh on me. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Baptize, me baptize me in your spirit. In your spirit. Holy, Spirit Holy Spirit, lead me, lead me. And, guide me. and guide me and fill me, and fill me. With, a with a new love for Jesus, with a fresh love for Jesus. Love for Jesus. Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit, I love you, I love you. and I need you. And I will honor you as my comforter. Come upon me now and fill me to the full in Jesus' name. Hi, thank you for watching this teaching. I hope you were blessed, encouraged and motivated by the Holy Spirit as we open up the Word of God. Can you please help me try and spread the Word? If you hit the subscribe button below, if you've not already, please do that. And maybe share it with others. Thank you and let's get this message out. God bless you.